Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Carino, and our guest today is Tom Cox. Tom, you've been around Wadsworth for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, a little bit of an exaggeration, but I think some of your relatives probably babysat General Elijah Wadsworth's grandchildren. Is that true? <laughs> I wouldn't be a bit surprised, Cesar, that uh, that's possible out on Route 57, old Route 57. Old Route 57. How many, how many generations do you go back here in Wadsworth? Well, I, I'm, I think I'm the sixth generation. Uh, uh, my great-great-grandfather co coming here in uh, 1848, or great-grandfather, because his, grand, his father came later. So I guess I'm the sixth, and I have children here who are the seventh and grandchildren who are, who are the, the eighth. eighth. So that makes quite eight a Eight generations, that's a long time, Tom. Uh, do you remember, do you know where the, the grandparents came from to Wadsworth? Grandparents came from uh, western Pennsylvania. My uh, great-great-grandfather great uh, left there, came here, and uh, worked as a miller down on Mill Road. Uh, I believe not. Where there. was Mill Road at that time? Well, it's right where it is now, uh, down. But not uh, Mill Street, though. Not Mill Street. Not Mill Road. Mill Road, which is an extension of Rainbow. Of Rainbow, down in, in the south yeah. part of Wadsworth. In the valley, yes. In the valley, uh -huh. right. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can confuse those two, Mill Street and Mill Road. And I'm one of them when I write. <laughs> when I, write. I know what I'm writing about, but I may put something. Uh, why did we call Mill Street Mill Street? Well, I. I don't know whether it was because the mills were there, the family of mills were I there. Think I think that's right. That's um, why. I think um, there were several of the mills people who lived right there. Oh yes, very nice people. Too. Oh yes. Um, the um, as I remember, people used to think that because the plank elevator was there, right there where that parking lot is, that they called it Mill Street for that. But I think it was the Mills family that lived there. I think that's possible. Yeah. I I don't know whether it uh, shows me in my Wadsworth Center. To, City or not. That 1939 uh, edition. Yes, our, mm -hmm. our junior class, that was our uh, uh, project. Uh, you wrote this? Well, I didn't write it myself, of but course. But you helped write it. Oh, yes. Now, I think uh -huh. that's extremely interesting. Let's hold this up again. This is Wadu Center to City, and I think it was written by uh, Elmar Sh Shapiro, wasn't well, it? Well, she was our English teacher, she was and this the English was our teacher. project. Mm -hmm. And um, this was an English project that you helped write when you were a when I was junior a, in high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What year would that have been? Well, I was a junior in 1936, 37, graduated in 37 and 38. So you helped write that. I think yes, that's, uh, yeah. no, that's something. <laughs> we learn something from our people almost every yeah. single solitary day. Yeah, well, of course, it, we <clears> do have a copy, Caesar, in the uh, lower level of the library. Uh, there's a couple copies there, and anyone that's interested in we're very proud of it, and I'd like him to go down there and read that. Well, then we wrote another one a little later on, Wadsworth Heritage, and <clears throat> who wrote that one for us? That was Eleanor Shapiro. She wrote it herself. Yes. At this time, I believe it was Eleanor Eiler. Eiler, uh, right. Yes, and then she married Norbert Shapiro. Norbert Shapiro. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then and, she wrote uh, this. And she wrote that on request, who many people kept after, so she wrote that. And that was a very well done piece of work. Yes. Tom, we'll go back to your family for a couple seconds. For the, for the sake of history, would you be able to identify who begot you and who begot them and so forth to go all the way back to 1848 so that we would have those family names for posterity? Had you told me, I'd have brought another book. Uh, but, they have another uh, book. Yes, uh -huh. but uh, it started with, uh, uh, in Pennsylvania, he came over here uh, as a paid mercenary, came here to fight and uh, unfortunately he was going to fight against the Americans in order to get over here. So mm -hmm. when he got over here, he deserted the army and uh, went with the French. He came from Alsace-Lorraine anyway. And, uh, the Cox family was at the... No, this is the Abel family. The Abel family. Yes, mm -hmm. uh -huh. my maternal, mm -hmm. uh, my mother's family. That's the one I have the longest period of it. Now, is that related to Roland Albel? Roland Albel was my grandfather. Your grandfather, mm -hmm. and he had the very first uh, Oldsmobile, or first car in no, Wadsworth. That, that was right? his brother. Oh, his brother. Andy. Andy, Andy Albel. Yes, mm -hmm. uh-huh. Uh, I'll tell you a little about Andy. Uh, yeah, let's, have, uh, let's hear about would that. Would you like to hear it now? Or yeah, sure. Later on. Well, Andy, 
of course, it'll tell in here, was the first automobile dealer. He had a bicycle shop on College Street. Where would it have been located on <clears throat> College Street? What's there right now? I would suppose it was very close to <laughs> where the parking lot is beside the restaurant. Next to the restaurant. Yes. Okay. and. Uh, or else I were, that's where Don Merriman was also. Yes. So I understand that that's where it was. But he had the first automobile, and then uh, uh, Bart Weaver, I think uh, Weaver, he sold a car to him. And if you look in John Hanna, the Mayor John Hanna's uh, office, uh, there's a picture of he and Weaver coming down High Street when he was delivering it from Cleveland. Is that right? So I think that was in 1903. 1903, sure. yes. first and, car in Wadsworth. Eventually he went to Akron and opened a uh, uh, garage there. Now, an interesting thing, he had a car, it was later on, 1989, I think, and he and a fellow, another cohort drove from uh, New York City to Miami, Florida. I wonder how long it took, do you know? I don't know how long it took, but they didn't have to be towed in. They were always able to get through the mud and everything Isn't else, and he was quite a mechanic. Mm -hmm. So uh, for that feat, uh, every few years, uh, he would uh, get a new Pontiac or an Oldsmobile, uh, courtesy of the General Motors Isn't car. that something? Mm -hmm. Now, that's something we never heard of either, and I don't think that's in Wadsworth Center to City. No, that's mm -hmm. from Aunt Grace Kuntz. That's from Aunt Grace Kuntz. <laughs> Uh, Aunt Grace Kuntz lived a few years too, didn't she? Yes, uh, she passed away at 108 and they made her quit climbing ladders and uh, fixing her own roofs when she was 94 or 96. 94, 95 yes, years uh, old. Didn't Grace um, have an illness when she was about 15? She thought that she was going to die or something? <laughs> that was back in the 30s. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> if we want to get personal, why uh, she always told the story and she was poisoned and didn't feel good and always sick. And then she says, they drew my teeth. They drew her teeth. Yeah, In other words, they pull pulled them. them out. They mm -hmm. didn't pull them. They drew them at that time. They drew them. Mm -hmm. And from that time on, why she regained her health. And as you can see, <laughs> she was sick for quite a while. So I guess she got those years at the <laughs> end of her, uh, towards the end of her life. I hope uh, everyone who's listening to this doesn't run out and have <laughs> teeth pulled or teeth drilled or what is it, teeth what? Drawn. Drawn. Right. Teeth drawn. Yeah, so that drew her teeth. Drew her teeth. <laughs> now, can you go back beyond Grandfather Rolly Abel? Yes. Uh, Tom Abel was his father. Tom Baldwin? No, Tom Abel. Oh, Tom Abel yeah. was his Thomas father. Thomas Motes Abel. His family name was Motes, again, from uh, western Pennsylvania. And he was came here when he was three months old. As I told you, Andrew was had been buying property mm -hmm. and... Uh, of course, the property that he bought eventually became the Wadsworth Hospital. Oh, I see. Yeah. And where Wadsworth Hospital presently That's is right. situated. That was, that was the Homestead Farm. Well, Tom, where were you born then? I was born down in the corner. As you turn around the, to go up uh, to the hospital, I that little house on the On the right-hand side? No, on the northwest corner. On the northwest corner. Mm -hmm. The house is still there, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks Quite nice now. They've recited it. They've recited it. it. Mm -hmm. Now there's a doctor's office right next to that. Right Is that next, correct? yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes. At that time, why it was a freed property. No, the it's not right next to it. The freed property was there, and then uh, Roy Fulton built that house for the doctor's office. Roy yes. Fulton. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Let's uh, let's go back to um, Aunt Grace Coons for a couple seconds. Um, okay. You remember her well, I'm sure, and probably oh, yes. sat at her knee for many, many years. Well, I lived over, uh, from the time I was three, I lived on Overlook Avenue. Mm -hmm. Of course, their farm was just over here, so we used to get to carry milk. To go now, and Aunt milk. Grace was your mother's sister or father's no, sister? My, I call her Aunt Grace, but she was my great aunt. She was my grandfather's sister. Your grandfather's sister, Roland, in other words, Roland's or, sister. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, what are some of the quaint little stories that we used to hear about Aunt Grace Coons that uh, you remember so well. Oh, one I recall uh, quite well is that uh, she was able, even uh, when she was 100 years old, she had a, a list of how much taxes she had paid this government of ours. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so she, uh, she would tell that. And uh, then uh, the dime, she would always talk about the dime bank in Medina. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, felt that she 
had something to do with saving it at one time, whether she did or not, I can't. And she probably did. Now, you were mayor during the time that she was still living, right? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, did she have any thoughts and ideas of how you should have run the city? <laughs> she always had, <laughs> had uh, ideas on uh, most anything that mm -hmm. was political. She was a uh, rabid Republican, and mm -hmm. we Republicans always was able to use uh, her yard for signs. We know that but, well, Tom. Yes, you know, you know, you couldn't get into <laughs> it. Couldn't get Even in though there. You, she liked you very well. That was a, a you know, she would let us in, that, and, and that's 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 <laughs> good. It's uh, it's good to have the. Um, but um, she would talk about it and. Uh, different things. Of course, she liked land and she liked farms. In fact, she held out quite a while to even be taken into the city because that was at one time the edge of the city. She didn't want her grand her grand nephew to have anything to do with uh, telling her what to do with, as when you were mayor, right? You didn't tell her what to do <laughs> ever. <laughs> didn't she have some land that was landlocked? Well, it, it ended up being quite landlocked. She wanted to give uh, the Akron, or Kent State University mm -hmm. land to put the extension on because Wadsworth had been very active in having the extension here in Wadsworth. And she felt that she'd like to keep it here. She was great on education, I'll have to tell you that. So she gave land to them if they would build it. Well, of course, politics entered into it, and Wadsworth did not get it. Norville no, that's true. Did. Went down to Orville. But, but that was uh, uh, the land that became landlocked then. And if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Stone unlandlocked it and attached it to him. Attached it. Now let's go back, now that we've talked about some of these things here at the periphery, let's go back to um, uh, Tom Cox, the young student in Wadsworth High School. Um, when you were there in Wadsworth High School, the superintendent probably would have been Frank Close. That's correct. And probably the principal would have been O.J. Work. Is that correct? That I would remember very well. Now, why would you remember that so well, Tom? <laughs> well, <laughs> he was a very good, fair man. O.J. Work, you mean? O.J. Oh, Work yes. was. A big, tall man, wasn't he? Very it? tall. And he had a uh, silver plate in his yes. forehead mm -hmm. where he was wounded in the First, First World, World War. War. Mm -hmm. But he was able to ferret out some of the people that weren't acting quite so well. I'm a little sorry to say now, but in memory, I may have been one of them. <laughs> what, did you, what do you remember that he might have done? I think it'd be good for the history of Wadsworth to know that one of his mayors was an errant student at one time. <laughs> well, he, as you know, Caesar, he had a desk. Yes, I surely do. I was and it in was front of that one, desk. One of his, you were in front of it. Well, sometimes some of us would get under it, <laughs> as many as three or four under a desk at one time. And of course, then maybe somebody might want to reach up over the desk and get a pencil or something on the inside mm -hmm. and bang. <laughs> he didn't do that anymore. But anyway, that was one of his uh, punishments. And it was usually fair. And, and uh, do you remember who had to be under the desk with you? Or? No, but I, I do remember uh, one time, I believe it was Howard Dressler and Dale Leatherman, and uh, I, as you recall, when you go up... Uh, Those steps. Well, this I, I'm going over to the uh, auditorium now. Oh, I we see. We would okay. have assembly, mm -hmm. and of course, being only an eighth grader, so mm -hmm. you were down on the totem pole. Right. But I do remember that Dale Leatherman and Howard Dressler and I snuck out a little earlier than we should have done. Before the end of the before program? The end, well, no, the program was over, but before uh, you're dismissed. Our, our time to dismiss. So we, all we did was went back to our classroom mm -hmm. and O.J. right behind us. Well, he grabbed Howard on one hand, Dale on the other, and says, Tom, you put your head in the middle there. <laughs> And then he came out like this, and I would go back like that. <laughs> so, well, he laughed, so I didn't get hit. But that was another one. He, he, I'm sure he wouldn't have hit us hard enough to hurt. But anyway, but he was, he was a teacher. Yes, he, he was. He was a, a teacher of life as much as his mathematics and so on. And we have the O.J. Work Auditorium named after him. Yes, and it couldn't be named after a better, a better person. Absolutely I right. I lived beside him then after that, so I had lived with it uh, for about eight years. You lived next time. to him? 
Yes. We're on High Street? On, no, on the Party. Oh, on Party. That's yeah. right. On Party. He lived on Party. Yeah, my wife. And he I had one daughter, Joanne. That's right. As I remember, who graduated, I think, in 1945. And that would seem approximately yeah. right. Yes. Tom, the reason we are asking these kinds of questions is that the Wadsworth Area Historical Society is trying to get all of these little tidbits down because if somebody ever writes the history of Wadsworth, they can pick out little things like this. For instance, um, when they write your memoirs as mayor of Wadsworth, which they will do incidentally, we may not read them because we'll probably long be long gone, but they'll write your memoirs. Uh, I think it'd be nice to know that that what you just got done saying that O.J. work uh, college you and whatever um, would be part of those because the human aspect of it is, is always going to be there. Let's go directly from from uh, the high school part to um, uh, I think you probably had to go directly to war, didn't you? After high school? No, no. I graduated in '38, and, oh, that's right, I, and that's right. uh, I was married in '41, and uh, went to the service in '42. In '42. Mm -hmm. Now you married. Um, the daughter of one of Wadsworth's favorite postmen. That's right, Bill Ray. Bill Ray. <laughs> he would do anything for anybody. Nicest man in the world. He was our mailman. We oh, didn't call him a postman in Wadsworth. We called him a mailman. <laughs> and um, as, as uh, fate will have it, um, uh, she passed away about 10 years ago, didn't she? Oh, no, it's been 20 years 20 ago. 20 years no, ago, a long time 1976, ago. 1976. 1976, yeah. yeah. Uh, wonderful person. Now, yeah, she played violin with your brother. That's right. <laughs> My brother and she played violin in the uh, Wadsworth. Uh, and who was the uh, the band director? E.K. E. E. Bennett. E.K. Yeah. Bennett. Yeah. What was he like? Uh, he was kind of bossy, as I recall. A bossy. He, and he was the geometry teacher also. He taught geometry and, yes, and led the band as well. Yeah, I didn't right. know that, and I don't think anyone has mentioned Is that E.K. Right? E. Bennett was a geometry teacher. Yeah. Now, we know that for a fact. Yeah, well, That's good to know. Yeah, we, we had a class breakfast the other day, and it was brought up again about that. Uh, yeah, E.K. Bennett, very good band teacher, and uh, I think probably, if I listened a little better, probably a very good geometry, geometry teacher. teacher but <laughs> You were probably too busy with O.J. work at the time. <laughs> now, <clears throat> uh, you served in the service, of course, um, and during the horribly devastating Second World War, uh, you were in about, what, three or four years? I was in three years, yes. Three years. And, and where I got were you? out in 45. Mm -hmm. Where were you at the time? I was in the Asiatic Pacific Theater, mm -hmm. Guam, Philippines, Okinawa, Japan, and so on. Tell us about a story and this is going to bring back some, some very bad memories, about three of your classmates or people whom you knew very well who were killed in the Second World War and a picture that you remember. I always remember that picture because the three boys, Jack Russell, Don Simister, and Jack Russell, or did Jack, I say Jack? Don Simister and Wayne Crawford. No, Wayne wasn't in no, that no, one. Um, it was a different one. Who was the third one? I... Dick Bernard, my best, Dick, one, yeah, one of my yeah, best friends. Yeah, Dick Bernard, yes, right. Uh -huh. And with them was Dancing with Jack was my wife, Ruth. And if you look in that picture way back, I'm looking up to check up on Ruth and Jack. But it's very devastating to think that the, in that picture, the three boys in front all lost their lives and they were all in the Air Corps. And weren't they, one right after another, weren't they standing? Very close together. I'd, very close together. I'd, they all lost their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack and Dick were seniors. That picture was taken at the senior prom, if I recall. And uh, then Do Don was a year younger, Don Semester. And they, this was taken at the senior prom, probably 1937, probably in 30, 38? 38, I would think, because that's always in the spring. Those three fellows were standing right in the front row. That's right. And, and those three fellows died. All died in the service. In the service. And uh, Gene Graff was with one of them, and my wife Ruth was dancing with the other. And I, without seeing it, I don't recall who the other girl was. But we'll always remember that picture. And then some time ago, Gary Bernard's sons came to Lions Club and told about finding Dick, Dick Bernard's remains. Uh, and it's ironic, he was coming back from his last mission. He just took this as a volunteer mission. 
What a oh. horrible, horrible mess yeah. that was. Tell us the relationship between Dick Bernard and Gary Bernard, Dr. Gary Bernard. Dick Bernard was Gary Bernard's oh. uncle, mm -hmm. uh, brother of Amy, Amy Bernard. Amos Bernard. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Dick was studying optometry also, no. and uh, so there was the father of Dick was an optometrist, and Dick and Amy would have been optometrists. Amy was, and now. I'm still going to this Bernard family. So am I. So <laughs> yeah. am I. Tom, you got out of the Army in 1945, is that That's correct? That's correct, yeah. That's when most of the fellows got out. Yeah, I had a child by then, so mm -hmm. I had an extra five points. And, so uh, you got out a little earlier. So mm -hmm. I got, yeah, I left Japan in right. September and out in October. When you got out of the service, I can remember when you got out of the service, as a matter of fact, uh, my oldest brother, who was a year younger than you, was severely wounded, very, very severely wounded in the, in the surface, and uh, was on crutches and casts and so forth for about a year or so after, afterwards. And incidentally, his uh, violin playing days ended with that one, with that. one bullet or with that one uh, shrapnel uh, exploding there in France as uh, he was getting off the beachhead um, in the uh, Battle of the Bulge. Um, and the um, the Martha Rays of this world um, and the Chris Carinos of this world uh, added a great deal to the music, the, the music appreciation of uh, City of Wadsworth and other places, but his ended right there and he had to continue. But I remember that because he would talk about all of the boys were coming back, you know, and so forth. And I can still remember his saying that um, you, um, uh, you had come back because he knew uh, your wife so well, yeah, well because yeah. he played uh, the violin with her and so forth, and he said Tom Cox came back. I didn't know you at that time because I was a little shaver, <laughs> That's right. 10, well, 11 years younger than you, and of course, um, in those days, older boys uh, didn't even look at anybody else. Uh, you know, you were the bosses and we yeah. were Took peons. Took a long time to get there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. going to pass it up. <laughs> That's right. So, but I do remember you're coming back. And then I remember, the next thing I remember you're doing is um, meeting with you in a hardware, or rather a lumber company. Oh, yes. Tell us about that. Well, it, you know, I went to Western Reserve, uh, uh, the Cleveland College of Embalming or Mortuary Science, they called it at that mm -hmm. time, which was held in, in the Western Reserve offices. Anyway, I had worked for my uncle, Frank Hilliard, the mm -hmm. Hilliard Cox Mulaney Funeral Home. Because he was married to an Apple girl, too. He, he was married to my next. Uh, my oldest aunt because my mother was the oldest in the family. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I had, uh, when I was ready to graduate, it was, it was too bad, but my uncle said, you better go out and get some experience. And I thought I'd already had the experience. <laughs> so anyway, I didn't pursue that. And uh, having a family, I went out with my grandfather and my brother, and we worked in, uh, it was out on Grace Drive, which is almost part of mm -hmm. the uh, hospital. And uh, so I went to work in the lumber yard there for building supply that he had. So we worked there for a couple years. And uh, Jack Halvey, a partner, he, he came to be a partner, worked for Goodrich, and he wanted to get back in. He said, I'll come back and sweep the floor. Well, we only had an uh, office about the size of this room, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So he came back, and we went to work and tried to build a lumber yard and eventually we went up on Waltrusa Avenue and built a building there, even digging the footer ourselves because you might as well in the winter there wasn't any business in the building right. industry at that time because bricklayers and everybody, they quit for the winter and started in the spring again. And so, Waltrusa Avenue is um, still standing, that, that, that's the, the, the building in which you built the footer, is that right? That's right. Now what's there today? What's there today is a restaurant. And it's it been that restaurant since you people walked away from there, or rather... Um, well, my partner and I decided to dissolve, not uh, through any animosity or anything, mm -hmm. but he always wanted to be in the restaurant business, and so he took the building, and I went down on College Street where Holmesbrook right. uh, Supply, or they call it Holmesbrook Incorporated, is now. And I did that, and he and Bill Kleckner started the 
uh, restaurant. restaurant. The Blue Onion, I believe, wasn't Blue it? Blue Onion, yeah, because when Jack was in uh, Los Angeles, I think there was a restaurant there called the Blue, the Blue Onion. Onion. So he did that. Now, thing. we're going to get back to this in a couple of seconds, but one of the questions I wanted to ask you here is uh, one to which I know the answer, I believe, but I think that the people in the city of Wadsworth probably do not know this and would like to hear about it. How and why did you name it Holmesbrook? <coughs> it was named Holmesbrook because it was out on the lower Holmesbrook Hill. Well, and the, the first one? The, the, the first lumber company was on yes, the lower hill? Yes, on Grace Drive, on Grace between, Drive. between Leatherman Road mm -hmm. and Route 57. Right. It was always nice to know when you heard a truck or something or a car coming up that road, you knew you had a customer right. anyway. <laughs> no one else used Grace Drive. No, fact, there wasn't it anything. Was, it wasn't even called Grace Drive, was it? I don't remember. Yeah. But anyway, uh, we started uh, the lumber yard there in Holmesbrook. It was named because of the Holmesbrook Creek. Right below the younger the, the lumber yard. No, right below Leatherman Road as you come down to the bottom of Holmesbrook okay. Hill. And I mm -hmm. keep saying that maybe a lot of people don't know where Holmesbrook Hill is. That's why I'd like to have I us see. talk. Well, anyway, about that. that's the steep hill that starts mm -hmm. uh, on uh, at Parkview. Or, Parkview Avenue and, and Westgate and Trees goes down and, and past trees down into the valley. And then, of course, there's a, a creek there. And the way the homes broke came, I, there was an Indian settler there, Indian Homes. And he had his shack back up Holmesbrook Creek. Do you remember anything about Indian Homes other than the fact that he lived there? Only that he, uh, I was told he was a trapper. And his, and, uh, he was an Indian, and they he called him Indian, Indian Homes. They called him yeah. Indian Homes. Yeah. He was uh, very early. Probably I could find something in there mm -hmm. about Indian Homes. But that's where Holmesbrook came from. We also had a street named Holmesbrook. Oh, really? Where? Uh, where Isham School is. Now, I did not know that. Well, now, tell us about that Holmesbrook. Well, it, it was never really a whole street. It was in behind the old normal school, mm -hmm. before, long before the Mennonite Isham, school, Mennonite school, mm -hmm. and before that, John McGregor school. And uh, anyway, he it was just a, a dedicated street, but never was developed, and it was called Holmesbrook. I can't uh, tell why. I don't know. Whether some of my relatives might have liked Holmesbrook and on the school board or something. Isn't I don't know something? really, but there, there it was. That's not there anymore, though. No, it's not dedicated anymore. They took it away because the school needed the property. I and see. Uh, you might have even been on council at the time that they vacated it. Uh, Possibly. Vacated I don't remember property. that. I don't remember the date. But, so that was another Holmesbrook. So the way that Holmesbrook Supply or Holmesbrook Incorporated, now they call it, because they also own the former Hoagland's Hardware. Yes. So it's Holmesbrook Hardware and Holmesbrook Lumber. And of course, I still call it Holmesbrook Lumber. Oh, yeah. Uh, and I suspect Appreciate other it. people do. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, we, um, we called it Holmesbrook because of the name of the creek and the reason we called Holmesbrook Creek Holmes or Brook or whatever was because of, of Indian Homes. That's, that's so correct. I wanted to hear that story from you because you probably are the one person in town who would have that as a first-hand experience. Probably yeah. the only one. Well, it may be now. <laughs> yeah, probably the only one. Now, in the lumber company, when you moved from Watrusa to, to Holmesbrook, um, you were there for quite some time, weren't you? Uh, we moved down in 61, and uh, my son-in-law, who was a principal of a high school in Garrettsville, wanted to get out of the administration. I guess he'd had enough of running to Cleveland bailing kids out and so on and so forth. I know the problem. I know you would. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> and uh, so he asked if he could come over and, and buy me out. Well, I'd been in it for how long? 47, 48 till 75 anyway. So he came and I asked him uh, if he was sure. Well, he thought he was. I said, well, you work a year before <laughs> you can do that. So, so that's... Uh, I was there for 29 or 30 years and uh, maybe was burning out a little bit and wanting to get on with some other things mm -hmm. and here came somebody so I sold it to he, him and then his brother came in with him, his brother just returning from service. They were both educators. Mm -hmm. I think they got an education down at the lumber yard. They sure <laughs> they did. They good education at that. <laughs> so that's how that happened. Tom, that gave you a lot more time then to do some of the things that you really would like to do, and that is to give this community, because not that you own the community, but the community 
owes a great deal of um, a great deal to you uh, wow. and your family because you certainly helped build this community. Tell us about your community affairs and what you did here in the community and oh. starting from shade tree commissions <laughs> to mayors. Well, to we have to go back <clears throat> farther than that. Uh, when Memorial Park was built, my uncle Joe Neath uh, was a legionnaire. And right, and his wife was a novel too, right? Yeah, she mm -hmm. was my aunt. Anyway, they invited me to come to council one night and name Memorial Park. Well, it was quite a thrill for me. I mean, they told me what the name was going to be and all that, but I got to make the motion that we make this uh, called Memorial Park. Memorial Park. In mm -hmm. honor of our boys. So I, then I worked with Memorial Park, uh, along with Dana Kreider and uh, Dick Everhard, and many of us were on that. And of course, it was all built by volunteer labor. Right. I mean, the Lions Club put up the shelter, the American Legion paid for the pond. And uh, so we worked on it. I was just thinking last night that Edgar Bell and I, if you ever looked down at the end, it was always overflowing. So uh, Medina Supply donated some concrete and Edgar Bell and I went out and smeared it around. And it looks like we did. Now this is Edgar Bell? Edgar Bell. Now there are two, Ed, there was an Edwin Bell and an Edgar Bell. Twins, yes. The twins. Mm -hmm. And this is Edgar Bell. Yes. E-D-G-A-R Bell. Yeah, he was very interested in the park. Right. So. Uh, and I know how we can ramble when we get on to something like that, but I'd like to call the attention to people that might view this film later on. There is a memorial row out there. It's all magnolia trees. And Dana laid it out, and uh, the park board uh, paid for the trees, and he put those trees in. So if you ever go out, there was a tree planted for every boy that lost their life in World War II and, and how the many, Korean War. How many did we have to plant, unfortunately? I, I'd like to be able to do it exactly, but I think it was someplace in the high 20s. It's very, very sad. And if very you'll sad. ever look at the beginning of that, just west of the shelter house, why well, you'll see there's a stone with a plaque on it with their names. I've seen that, and I'm the, sure you every have. time that I go down there, it just breaks my heart because mm -hmm. I knew just about every single, and so did you, oh, I'm sure, every yeah. single one of those mm -hmm. kids, those young men who um, lost their lives. Right from Pearl Harbor on. Yes, yeah. uh, and incidentally, we're gonna bring Dana Kreider in on one of these programs, oh, and great. he's gonna be telling us a little <laughs> bit more about that too, but okay. don't think that you're rambling, Tom. This is extremely interesting. Tell us more about Memorial Park, because we look at it now and we think, well, it's always been it's there. Always been what there. was it before? It was the match company's property. Mm -hmm. It was nothing, uh, that, and they donated it to uh, the city. Uh, I think there's 30 acres. Describe there. what it looked like before it became the park. Well, I remember the Walter City Club, a bunch of boys that started a club in the Depression to keep themselves off the street. What was the name of the club? City of Wadsworth City Club. The Wadsworth City Club. Were mm -hmm. you part of that? Yes, mm -hmm. I wasn't a charter member because, fortunately, I wasn't that old as some mm -hmm. of them. <laughs> but anyway, we went out, and I do remember it was nothing but bram an awful lot of brambles. I mean, it just had the work cut cutting them down, and uh, other clubs mm -hmm. took different sections. and. Uh, so it was just a rolling hill that... Uh, it was a thicket. That's the word I was saying. I was saying bramble. It was yeah. just covered just with Just a that. thicket. I worked at the match company in 48 or 9, something like that, uh, during the summer. And <laughs> you talk about low man on the totem pole. I mean, I was what it was called a mule. Yeah. A mule did nothing more all day long than to push, <laughs> push uh, carts of matches Sorry. around. And um, if we didn't have matches to push around, which was pretty, was, you know, pretty rare that we wouldn't have matches to push around. We would have to go out to the back there behind the salt works and in what is now Memorial Park mm -hmm. and pick up this or pick up that. And honestly, heavens, it was, you needed a machete to get through <laughs> to get there. Through it was it. horrible. Well, that's what I was trying to describe as my memory. <laughs> it was just horrible. But you people cleaned it up and the the, the city of Wadsworth helped, the Lions Club, the Kiwana, or the um, uh, Rotary, Rotary and all of those service women's clubs. Clubs, women's uh, clubs. Uh, uh, incidentally, there's a president's row out there, too, as you come in from Grandview Avenue uh, going west, while you'll see trees planted. And at whatever time that was, uh, each one of those trees was a past president of, uh, I think it was uh, Wadsworth 
Flower Club, but they'll mm -hmm. probably get on me. It might have been Bud and Bloom, too. But Whatever. But it was a, one of the environmentalist clubs. That's right. That's right. Uh -huh. Well, th this is part of Wadsworth history that I think um, our people really take for granted, and they repeated that, unfortunately. But um, people look at that and they say, well, this is, this is nice. This is, you know, this, the, the roads were already here, and they just <laughs> put some blacktop on them. And, they weren't uh, there. <laughs> no, they were not there, as a matter of fact. How many times did we build that? Um, Shelter. Shelter. This is the third, third time. Third time has been born. Uh, torn the, down. the walls, which uh, Dana Kreider's brother was the mason on it, and uh, Dave Rohr uh, was a great pusher on this uh, uh, shelter house. Dave Rohr, president of the bank at that, one time. Yeah. At one uh -huh. time. Uh, related to Dana Kreider some way? Uh, probably, but that uh, it was D uh, Dana's brother that was a mason, right. though, and he mm -hmm. worked with it there. He lived up on West Street, mm -hmm. incidentally in a stone house, of course. And uh, so uh, that was built, and then the vandals burned the roof twice, and this last time they really did a horrible thing. They, they did a number on it the yes, last time, uh -huh. and they finally have it uh, done again. I, uh, that, that's horrible. I mean, all the work that has gone into that and what it stands for, the Memorial Park really means that it is a memorial to the fallen dead. That's correct. And the people who fought in the wars uh, from, uh, did we, was that from the Second World War on? Or that was that, no, just the Second World War. Second World time. War. Yeah, now that uh, Memorial Row that I talked about mm -hmm. did include Korea, but the, uh, the shelter house was built. For the, for the second And the whole war. thing was, we didn't think we were ever going to have another war. Don't forget, that was one. Oh, that's right. That's we were right. We're never, never have another, another one. So. It was the war to end all wars. Now, Tom, <clears throat> your preparation for becoming mayor um, probably was uh, as well poised as anyone's in Wadsworth <laughs> because not only did you, A, name Memorial Park, B, actually worked at helping to make Memorial Park what it is, and then according to your own self-degradation, went down there and slopped some cement in. And I've looked at that uh, overflow, and it's not slopped in. You, if you want to see slopped in cement, you come watch my masonry work. It is done beautifully. Um, oh. You've actually had your, your sweat and toil in that park. That's right. Now, let's go I about... I lived there, too. And you lived, I lived on Park That's here, right. So. You lived right behind it. Yeah, that's why I lived there. Let's, um, let's go about two and a half miles south and just a smidgen east, west. What's down two and a half miles south and just a smidgen west from there? Well, I think it'd be one of two things. There's the uh, Wadsworth Air Municipal Airport. That's and exactly. And there's also the Industrial Park. Tell us about those two and how you had your hand in those two. Well, I was interested in flying and... Uh, you fly your own plane, don't you? Well, I did. I don't anymore. You don't anymore? I, no, I don't have a plane yet, so I wasn't flying it enough to... Justify, justify having, having, having one of those. Well, in the airport, why there were a bunch of interested people, Dr. Klotz more than anyone else, uh, so many boys, and they carved out an old grass runway out there. Uh, and they did an awful lot of pick and shovel work, and, and they built that airport. Uh, it was land owned by the city, close to our disposal. Uh, the um, uh, dump. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it was this, it was, that's what we called it, wasn't it? The dump? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> down at the dump. Well, it wasn't the, the, the city dump was down on State yeah, Street. Right. But then this was our disposal area there. Uh, wastewater treatment mm -hmm. plant, that's a nicer word for it. So anyway, that was built. And uh, a little later on, we got grants from the state. And uh, fortunately, I have to always give Mr. Groves uh, of Groves Construction credit. Uh, he had to have some place to store his machinery when he was building the ramps going on 76 right. off of 57. And uh, so he put, it was very nice to leave his earth movers and bulldozers down at the airport. And the boys played with them at night. Yes, huh? and, and <laughs> a, a tank of fuel. Mm -hmm. So on the weekends, why we would scrape out to get the paving done. So anyway, that was, that was done. And uh, of course, still flying and mostly par partially commercial, but mostly private. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was controversy what we were doing. But Dr. Klotz had vision that sometime Wadsworth would need an airport. I mean, to have commercial work 
And uh, believe you me, there's the, uh, our airport is one of the busiest ones uh, around, here. around here. As we speak, there is more controversy regarding the airport, but you know, I suspect that nothing that has been brought into Wadsworth has been brought in without some controversy. That's right. Okay. And then sometimes it quiets down and sometimes it doesn't. Well, it's understandable. What was your, uh, what was your role in the airport? Um, you're being very modest here, well, Tom. I, think, uh, uh, I just helped with the rest of the people. You the just people helped with the rest and, of them. Uh, it belonged to the Airmen's Association. What uh, about that building that's down there? How, how did you happen to um, contribute toward that? Well, the bill, I think you mean the administration, administration building. building. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, Governor Rhodes was uh, great on airports uh, and wanted to have a county airport in each, mm -hmm. each county. And uh, so when these grants became available to, to build those, we applied for them, mm -hmm. and uh, had some connections possibly down uh, in, in Columbus, and of course we had And Grace give, helped on that, probably. No, we had to give that to Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe. Uh, he was commissioner Neith, at that that's time. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so... Uh, Uncle Joe Neath. Rather than have Medina have it, why, some way or other, we, Wadsworth got it got the permission, and so they built that, and then we got the north-south runway then and made a real airport out of it. Now, Tom, you didn't uh, slip a few boards from Holmes Brook Supply down there, did you? <laughs> well, we may have had a midnight requisition <laughs> party a couple times to do some of the things. My understanding. But not, <laughs> not to build that building. That building is a very expensive, well-built building. Well, all of Not that my lumber would have I was going to say, your lumber would have done a beautiful job. Huh? We're going to have to go from, from a uh, couple of these things, but um, and these are very important. I mean, Memorial Park, that is one huge undertaking, and yeah. you were heavily responsible for yeah. that. The Wadsworth Municipal Airport, heavily responsible for that. Tell us some of the other things that you did to prepare you, uh, to, pre to, pre to prepare yourself to become the mayor of Wadsworth. Well, one of the things I did that probably didn't prepare me for what was, that? <laughs> was the Industrial Park. Tell us about that. Well, the, the land was down there, and uh, we needed an industrial park, and uh, so Jim I police and I volunteered to uh, be the promotion or public relations or whatever to try to get the permission of the city, and it was put on the ballot whether we should have it there, because earlier on there was a study, and they wanted to have it up on top of Leatherman Road, but anyway, this became available, and so uh, we put our names on the ads and things like that, and uh, eventually it came uh, to pass. It was uh, nip and tuck, uh, but uh, a lot of telephone calls, and so it became an industrial park. Now, you make it sound so easy. Uh -huh. I put, uh, you put your name on a couple of pieces of paper, you made a few phone calls, and we had an industrial park. <laughs> now tell us the real story, Tom. Uh, what? what was done on that thing? <laughs> well, that's what was done. I mean, we we you had worked at back. it. Yeah, and it was something that a number of people, not just me, I mean, a number of people thought that we needed to compete in this world an industrial park because we needed that for our tax base. We couldn't just keep moving people in. or we, And what, most of the time we had the lowest tax rate in, in the county. And we still do. And still but do. But you know, Tom, you know more about this than I do, but I think that for every house that is built in Wadsworth, that um, it actually costs the school district, does it not? Because they don't pay enough taxes. Yeah, that's a, it's a Chuck Parsons has tried to explain it and the uh, finance people, but a nice $200,000 house gets built, and of course we get more real estate taxes, and then we go down to the state, and they take it away That's from right. us. That's mm right. -hmm. So, so it's, it's a never-ending thing. You, you don't end up with any more money. So you have to have that industrial park for the tax base, and you were one of the persons who saw that we had this. How many factories were in Wadsworth when you were growing up in high school? Well, as factories, of course, the brickyard was not in Wadsworth Wasn't and no. still isn't, but I mean, we call it, there was that. And we had what we called the Chemitex, Chemitex. Uh, which is uh, now Barefoot uh, Soul, or Barefoot Soul, and now Edgerton and Robertson, yeah. and the, of course the injector and the mats, the big employers. That's four. How many do we have now? <laughs> Boy, I'd hate to guess. I suppose a hundred and some major 
major ones which employ like over 20 people or something. I think and, you're right. And so, someplace there. And uh, I remember when uh, the industrial park, one of the reasons that we didn't have to have it is because if the injector of the mat shop got a big order, why we hired more people than Medina well, who was surely. going with these little small mm -hmm. satellite uh, things. But, but when they the closed down, we had to have, and someone had to have that vision. And I think that the city of Wadsworth is always going to be indebted to you for that vision. Uh, yes, there are other people as well. But oh, yes. You, yes. Have a, you, had, you, had some, so. you had some, some gut-wrenching kinds mm -hmm. of decisions that you had to make, and I know fully well on a personal basis mm -hmm. that you had to take a lot of gaff for all of these things. Yeah, and I, I, I was... Uh, I remember Jack Summer also would have to yes, do Jack. that, and he had a business, and so many times you'd go to businessmen and ask for their support on a controversial issue, and they'd say, well, I might make some of my customers mad. I don't think that's true in the long run. You make some mad, but there's always people who, yeah, right. half people hurt. Mm -hmm. I can still remember coming into the, heart of the um, lumber company there, and um, uh, you have a lot of beautiful qualities, Tom, and oh, one of the most beautiful <laughs> ones is the fact that you say it exactly like it is. You don't care whether people like it or not, but you say it exactly like it is. <laughs> well. And someone was giving you a good going over on something that was going on, I think it was down in the industrial park. And um, I was standing there in line and waiting to be waited on, and I heard you say to this man, said, well, I tell you what, if you want to give a little bit more money in your own taxes from your own house, that's fine. But if you don't want to do that, how about just letting us put some factories down there and you won't have to pay so much. <laughs> yeah, well, the guy walked away somewhat happy and somewhat angry because he, you had had him, you know. And I thought to myself at that time that uh, you, had, um, you had some guts to do some of the things which had to be done. And we will always be forever grateful for that kind of, a, um, yeah. of, of an approach. Tell us then a couple more things that you've done uh, uh, um, as far as uh, the civic mindedness is concerned. And then we want to talk about your years as mayor because a lot of things happened when you were mayor too. Oh, gee, Caesar, I don't know. That's kind of hard to say. I mean, uh, one of the most, kind of, one of the hardest ones I ever had was, and this is it's getting to me personally, I don't want the city, but was being on the Selective Service Board during the the Korean War. That was hard one. That's Vietnam a tough one. War. That's a very and, tough one. But you had someone had to do it. And here yeah, again, you weren't afraid I, to do it. I quit once and and uh, it enticed me to come, come back. back again because hopefully I was fair. I, I don't know whether yes, I was I always worried that you'd come home, drive home and wondering all the way home whether you were did, did right or not. Who but, else was uh, on the selective service board with you, Tom? Well, one was uh, Tom Wolf, your mm -hmm. Democratic chairman of oh, yes. Medina I know County, Tom Wolf. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Tom uh, Welsh, from uh, who is uh, a, an attorney with Westfield. Right. Mm -hmm. And there were different ones at different times. That uh, those are ones that I remember very well because we served together probably longer. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that was one of them. Gee, I, I don't. Kind of keep kind of keep track of things like that. <laughs> well, let's go, uh, but let's there go were to mayor days. <clears throat> you were uh, president. But before of I get through, for... I want to I want to talk some okay. uh, about uh, some fires and things like that. So okay. Maybe it's all in in history, and you don't need it. Let's but, hear it. Well, in 1928, they had the uh, big fire, the Salt Works fire. Oh, by all means, let's yeah, talk about that. That, that yes. was some conflagration, and uh, I was eight years old then, and. So I could, up in my attic on Overlook Avenue, which is one of the highest places in the city, I could watch that. And uh, so I did, and I remember it very well. But what came of that then later on in the early 60s, I believe it was, why Elmer Larson and, and uh, uh, Walt Gehring started a company of which they sold shares in it, and I was fortunate enough to have a couple dollars to get mm -hmm. in with them. And it was there to try to, to make jobs and, of course, prosper also. The prosper, I don't know, that may come sometime. We don't mm -hmm. know when. But the, all those buildings down there off of, on State Street was a result of having the salt works burned down. Uh, and so this, all the businesses have come in. And many of them have been there for many years, making oh, employment yes. mm -hmm. in town. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, 
It's not a big factories or anything, but anyway, that's how people in Wadsworth pulled together and did it. Same way with the uh, Wadsworth Community Corporation, uh, who saw Sib Strimple and Dave Rohr and a, a bunch of people saw a need for You're on that, that. too, weren't you? Yeah, but they were the instigators mm -hmm. of it. And so they started uh, this, uh, well, where Remington Products was. Mm -hmm. That was one of them along there. So they would start buildings, and then eventually people could buy them. So I just wanted to bring that in. The catastrophes makes, opens another door, mm -hmm. and we, we continue on. So, so that, uh, that I didn't want to do that. Oh, I remember another one longer talking about me. I wasn't going to talk about me. I don't talk about other people. But anyway, as you recall, when the township and the city went to uh, uh, together and yes. consolidated, mm -hmm. uh, I'll never forget it. There were only two people in the township that went up to Medina to speak for the consolidation. Who were uh, they? Bill Bucks, if you remember yes. Bill, and myself. <laughs> we, <thought. laughs> and we were fairly young, too, so we were kind of embarrassed. But we did <laughs> because the township naturally didn't want to go in with the city at no, that time. No, not at all. And, mm -hmm. And anyway, it was a good thing. It had it, it, another, another thing it had to be. Uh, so. And it took some guts to uh, do that one as well. <laughs> yeah, it did that night. I'll tell you. Let's, okay. let's run to the mayor's job. And you, we're going to have to have you back because you have too much history for just okay. one hour. But let's, <laughs> let's run to the mayor's job because so many things have happened uh, that happened during your, your um, tenure as mayor. Uh, you started out as a president or as a council person. Well, yeah, my political career, if you want to call it that, mm -hmm. started out as being Ward 4 Councilman. I never thought of you as a politician, no, more, I, of a statesman, either, but more of a statesman than a politician. <laughs> well, anyway. And you and I are on different uh, sides of the fence politically, but that does make a bit of difference Not because I, I uh, served under you uh, as a council person, and I think that you would probably remember that I was very cooperative, and not only cooperative, but... Um, and a good reader. And a good reader. That's Remember when we had to read, yes. had to read all the ordinances? We had to read the ordinances, <laughs> and you had me read a 21-page ordinance there, and it's all about um, uh, sexual harassment. <laughs> and I read that thing with, uh, with extraordinary speed, and I don't know if anyone had heard it, but no one cared anyway. <laughs> But so you were a council person. Then you became president of council for a couple mm -hmm. terms, didn't you? Yeah, with two terms of board councilman, and then two terms as president council, and then lost the mayor's job the first time around. Oh, did you? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Yeah. To whom? To J.D. Oh, yes, I do course. remember that yeah. now, yes. And uh, then I came back. Oh, that's right. I was, after being councilman, I wasn't ready yet, so then mm -hmm. I lost that. And then I came back as president of council two years later and served two terms on that. And then became mayor after Earl Gottwald moved. Right. And, Tell us what happened during your tenure as mayor. Well, I wish I had written it down, but I, like I said earlier, I don't keep track of things that right. uh, I did. But of course, one of the more, uh, things that we did, and I, <laughs> they did it while I was in China, but we started the uh, uh, injector. We took the old injector building. The city had nerve enough to take that and try mm -hmm. to make an incubator out of it. And so that was one of the larger things and controversial and uh, like you said earlier there that somebody said it was a white elephant well it was going to be a, a bad elephant if we didn't do something That's right. and mm -hmm. so we did be a it. dead elephant it'd be it, a uh, dead elephant mm -hmm. yes and, uh, and in some ways it turned green i think we can credit um Fred Fister for having said that the white elephant done turned green. Done That's why they said green, it in Georgia. Yeah. I will never forget that. Fred's very clever with those things. <laughs> we had the uh, right. way that went about then. We appointed uh, people that had the things to do with business and also had been in the injector for many years. Mm -hmm. Chuck Kale uh, was one of the people. And, uh, so anyway, we finally got a tenant. And then that tenant kind of went sour, but we've got another one, and there's still people. There people are working in there. So oh yeah, they, that was uh, that was one. Of, and uh, gee, I, I I don't know Caesar. We had to put just both what about the north end? up in the north end. Yeah, the north end came. <laughs> uh, that was a funny thing. Of course, people wanted something in the north end. Some people thought that well, the Republicans. I shouldn't bring that up. Don't want put business up there because we liked our downtown, which of course we did like our downtown. 
But anyway, I often said, well, what do you think we put sewer and water across there for, for nothing? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at a great expense because you had to go underneath yeah, um, so that did, uh, 76. did happen. And of course, it was built during uh, Mayor Henson's mm -hmm. tenure. I was president council, but he was the mayor. I think there's a quote that uh, was very funny and certainly uh, at the present time has come to fruition. What did you tell J.D. Henson when he was mayor about the North End? Well, the mayor's on the planning commission, and, uh -huh. uh, and they were sitting down there one time, we were talking about it, and I said, Mayor, are you trying to make the planning commission make the north end the center of town? And I really had thinking about it, because we were zoning commercial around the, mm -hmm. the Clark's Corners curve, and uh, <laughs> J.D. took a little offense to it, but he said, why, of course not. Well, anyway, it's, well, it's leaning it. that way. <laughs> and fortunately, uh, I, while I was mayor, we started the downtown project uh, where, with the trees and the, the different the lights and renovating the downtown, trying to make it uh, more viable. In fact, I always said that was our front yard and when trying to sell it, I would ask people that you don't really want trash in your front yard and boarded up windows mm -hmm. and things like that. And so we tried to make the downtown a, a, a better area to when you bring people in, your friends, while you naturally take them downtown. You can't get any place in Wadsworth without going That's downtown. That's right. <laughs> and uh, so I remember giving a talk to the Downtown Association one time at uh, Collector's Restaurant. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not Collector's Restaurant well. now, but uh, wherever it, whatever it is now. <laughs> they, they changed like banks, uh, bank names. And um, there were about 50 or 60 people on a Sunday night there trying to make sure that the downtown had some presence. And boy, one of the nicest things about Wadsworth right now is the fact that there's not one storefront in downtown that isn't occupied. occupied. And that came, again, as a result of some good, positive thinking people like you and others in, in, the, in the city. What, uh, what were some of the problems in the North End that um, you thought were insurmountable, but they, they never came about? Well, of course, one of the things that they worried about, and some people did, that uh, would take all the business away from downtown. Did it? No, Not didn't at all. take it all. It, uh, it made some changes. As we know, we can't go down to Abrams uh, or Holcomb's IGA. We mm -hmm. have to go farther to, to get something. We can go to the south side of town and uh, for groceries. And, uh, but, and there become more offices and service stores, but we still have Bixler Electric, uh, we still have the, the hardware, two Hard, hardware stores. Hard, two hardware stores, yeah. And, uh, Wadsworth Hardware and Supply and, and uh, uh, the Holmesbrook Home Supply. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, the restaurants are about the, the same. Mm -hmm. I do miss that uh, for some reason or other we used to have about, uh, well we had two men's stores mm -hmm. way, way back. We had clients, clients and we and had Curtis's. Oh, Curtis's, that's right, yeah, uh, Dick and, Curtis. And we had women's store. Now we can't do that anymore. And uh, uh, so those are some of the things that were going to happen anyway. But mm -hmm. at, at that time, it was some controversy. But um, the, uh, the fact that um, it didn't cause the demise of the downtown. No, no, no. I went through Barberton the other day. And honestly, heavens, it's almost um, a sin the way that some of those stores fronts have just now closed up and there's nothing is going on. But that's, our downtown is alive. That's very uh, unfortunate for Barberton too because right. they got all kinds of federal money. I mean, we were well off over here mm -hmm. and we didn't lose a lot of industries and stuff that we didn't. Right. Pay. So anyway, that 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 came about and the North End is viable. I would have thought that maybe we're going to have a con. Sterling Secrets always said we're going to have a Coney Island up there, which of course with all the restaurants we have. But. You're mentioning Sterling Secrets. I'm going to go try to get him on one of these programs mm -hmm. too. I've been trying desperately to get some of these people to appear before a camera and uh, many of them don't want to. I don't think Sterling would mind doing that. I'm going to call him also. But now we have only about a minute left, oh less than a minute left on this program. But I want to say, Tom, that um, the fact that you have had so many years of experience in town and your experiences have been so widespread, we're going to have you on definitely for another hour <laughs> at a later time. Well, However, just to close today's program, how about just giving us a little something about uh, why you stayed in Wadsworth and you probably will live here to the last rest of your life. That's you know? exactly right. I'm not going any place. I started here and I'll end here, but it's been a, a 
I have a big one of those arrow things that I used right. to wear in the parades and stuff that says, I love Wadsworth. I love Wadsworth for what it is and the people around it. We've got beautiful people in town. We do, we do. And uh, I was, when I was mayor, I was very lucky. If I had to have a committee, all I had to do was call people and, and they'd that be there. Happened. Thank you, Tom, for this hour. We'll have you back again. Thank you, Caesar. I enjoyed it. <laughs>